and welcome to this video. So today we're going to talk about how we can use Google Forms in checking the attendance of our students, teachers, or participants. Alright, so first we have to make sure na nakasign in tayo sa Google account natin. And once we're signed in, we have to go to docs.google.com slash forms. Again, that's docs.google.com slash forms. And as you can see, we will be directed in Google Forms. So another way for us to go to Google Forms is to click these nine dots here para makita natin lahat ng services or applications ng Google. And we could go to Google Drive. Kasi lahat naman ng ginagawa natin sa Google Forms ay nasisave sa Google Drive natin. So once that we are here in our Google Drive, we just have to click New, and then we can see Google Docs, Google Sheets, and Google Slides. We have to click More para lumabas ang Google Forms. And there you go, we will be directed to a blank Google Form. Okay, so now that we are in Forms, we have to click Start a blank form or Start a new form. Ang paggawa po natin ng Attendance Form depends on a lot of things. It depends on the purpose. Pwede kasing gagamitin natin siya for, as a replacement for DTR. Pwede namang gagamitin natin siya to check the attendance of our students. Or perhaps we have a school activity and we would like to check the attendance of our participants. It might also depend on the number of participants that you have or the details or the data that you would like to get from your participants. Okay? So, sa una natin gagawin, Kunwari, ang gagawin natin is like a DTR for our teachers. So, let's say, for example, you're the one in charge for checking the attendance of the teaching and non-teaching personnel in your school. So, if that will be the case, then ito muna yung gagawin natin. So, first, we have to come up with a title. Okay? We can write the title here or here. Okay, so let's say, for example, our title is Daily Time record and you could even include the name of your school so form description we could include our instructions so anything that you would like to indicate before the participants answer the daily time record so on my case simply lang ilalagay ko kindly fill up the form okay so on this part Ang default ng Google Form is a multiple choice question. Okay, so if you have a list of the names of the teachers at hindi naman siya ganun karami, so you could already type in their names. Okay? So, for example, um, lagay natin to as name of teachers. So, kung inalagay na natin yung names ng teachers natin, pwede na tayo sa multiple choice. Pero kung marami yung mga teachers, yung names of teachers, pwede na instead of multiple choice, we could also use drop down. So, let me show you first yung pagkakaiba kapag multiple choice at kapag drop down yung pinili natin. So, kapag multiple choice, let me just type in the names of the teachers. Okay, so for example, ito yung mga teachers natin, let's say, sa isang department. Anyway, yung monitor mo lang kunwari ay teachers under one department. Okay? So, if we already have the list of the names of these teachers, pwede natin siyang gawin multiple choice para i-click na lang ng mga teachers yung pangalan nila. So, this is how it will look like. So, you find the teacher, all you need to do is to click on my name. Okay? Now, if you have a longer list of teachers in a certain department, what we can do is, instead of multiple choice, we can have it as drop-down. Okay? Ganito naman yung maging result niya kapag drop-down. And using the preview button, now if we have chosen drop-down instead, this is how it's going to look like. So, wala ka agad yung choices. We will have to click here para lumabas lahat ng names and t-shirts. So, ang drop-down, maganda siyang gamitin kapag marami tayong names na ilalagay para hindi mapuno yung page ng Google Form natin. Pero kung po konti lang naman, we could use multiple choice. Okay? Okay, so now meron na tayong name of teachers and we could make this as required para hindi nila malimutan na mag-click sa name nila. And then, we could add another question here. 
to add another question all we need to do is to click this plus sign okay now since this is a substitute for a DTR sa DTR naman natin time in and time out lang naman yung kailangan so the next question that we're going to write is attendance and then we only have two choices which is the time in and time out okay and then choose required so again to check how it looks like all we need to do is to click the preview button and this is how our google form will appear so again choose the name let's say i am grace d cruz and then i'll just choose if I, it's my time in or time out and then submit the response now beside the preview button is the settings the one that looks like a gear so here um it has three components so as a general you have the option to collect email addresses okay meaning to say if i check this let me show you it's say comuna now since i check this automatically the first part no ating form will be the email address of our participants okay so that means that the participants of the teachers need to encode or type in their email addresses too now going back to the settings under the correct email address we also have the response receipts that means to say that the respondents can have a copy of their response and you have two choices whether a respondent makatanggap ng copy ng response nila if they requested for it or whether always whenever they answer the form okay on my case hindi ko na muna ko collectahin yung email addresses but if that's what you need then you could just simply click the next one is require sign in so you could limit the form into one response or pwedeng hindi on my case hindi ko siya i-limit to one response kasi time in and time out siya and also the respondents can edit after submit and see summary charts and text responses so for data privacy we don't usually click this part so presentation naman we could show progress bar that is if you have many sections in your google form or mahaba yung content ng google form mo para makita ng mga participants yung progress nila kung ilang percent na ba yung na-accomplish nila sa google form you could shuffle question order usually ginagamit natin to kapag quizzes and then we have show link to submit another response. Since hindi ko kini kanina sa so general yung limit to one response, we have this option. Now you could also add a confirmation message, and we have a default message here: your response has been recorded. Or you could write thank you for completing this form. So you could modify the confirmation message that depends on what you want and we have the quizzes but since this is not a quiz then we don't have to go over the quizzes part okay and once you're good with the settings all you need to do is to click save okay so now that we have talked about the settings preview next to it we have the customized theme so the customized theme looks like a palette so here you could choose the color let's say you don't want purple so you could go for teal or green or blue okay and you could also choose an image as your header so here we have available themes that you could select pwede ka nang pumili dito or if you have a customized image let's say header or logo for your school then all you need to do is to click browse so that you could upload it here or you could also search for photos in your google drive okay so those are our options so for the meantime pipili muna ako ng available header dito so let's say for example ito yung gusto kong header so i just have to click the header and then insert and there you go may header na tayo so as you can see na bago din yung color natin kasi ang google form automatically ina-adjust din nila yung color sa header na napili natin now we also have here the font style so if you don't want the basic then we have three other choices but for now okay naman ako sa basic okay so for example tapos na tayo sa daily time record natin 
at ready na tayo na isend siya sa ating mga participants or sa ating mga teachers in this case. So, we just have to click send. Okay? And we could actually type in their email addresses kung kanina natin siya isi-send. Pero dahil matrabaho siya, we don't usually do this. What we usually do is here, click this one so that we could get the link. So, we have here the generated link. Let's shorten the URL. Yan, para mas madali siyang makopya. And copy it. So, we have to copy it and then just send the link of this form to our, let's say, group chat para masagutan na ng ating mga participants. Alright, so let's say for instance, may mga responses na tayong natanggap. So, here, makikita nyo kung ilan yung number of responses that we have received for this form. So, click natin ang responses and automatically, ang makikita natin is the summary of responses. Now, if we would like to download our summary of responses, all we need to do is to click here. Dito tayo sa tatlong tuldok. Okay? And click download responses. That CSV. So, click this one and automatically, download na yung daily time record natin. Now, here is the Excel version, Excel copy of our daily time record. So, adjust lang natin ng konti yung mga cells. And you can see here in the first column that we have the timestamp, which is the reason why there's no need for us to include the date and time kasi automatically makikita na natin siya sa first column. Okay? And then we can see here the name of the teachers who timed in at what time and kung anong oras din sila nag-time out. Okay? So that's how it's going to look like. So for example, hindi naman yung BTR format yung gagamitin natin, then we could make another form. So for example, uh, we have a lag session or we have an in-service training or a webinar and we would like to check the attendance of our participants. So kung ganun yung case natin, so for example, ito naman yung attendance natin for an in-service training. So you may include the name of your school here and then write your instructions. So again, ang ating default is always a multiple choice question and of course, ang first question natin is the name. So, let's ask for the name of the teacher. We could also indicate the format or pwede rin naman na hiwa-hiwalay siya. Okay? So, kapag magkakasama na, gusto mo isang section lang is for the name of the teacher, then pwede ganito. Name of teacher and then write the format. Last name, first name, middle initial. Okay? And then choose short answer. Yan. And then, of course, i-require natin siya para hindi malimutan ni teacher na iligay yung name niya. Just to show you, pwede rin naman na hiwa-hiwalay siya. Halimbawa ay last name, and then automatically, minsan nariligit na siya as short answer. I-require natin, and then, let's have another question. First name naman ni teacher. Okay? And then, require ulit natin. Pwede rin natin kopyahin or i-duplicate para hindi na natin kailangan mag-type in. And let's say, ang kailangan naman natin ay middle initial. Okay? Pero hindi ko siya i-require kasi not everybody has middle initial. Okay? So, pwede rin na ganito yung maging format natin. Hiwa-hiwalay yung last name, first name, and middle initial. Okay? Now, for this instance, halimbawa ang gusto ko ay name of teacher, isang section lang siya. So, ito na lang yung gagamitin ko. Now, we have the name. So, ang second na question natin, halimbawa, is to find out kung saan department si teacher. So, ang pinili ko dito ay drop down. You could also choose multiple choice if that's what you want. Pero since more than eight yung department, so, ginawa ko na lang siyang drop down para hindi masyadong crowded sa Google Forms. Okay? And then, the next question, let's say, na kailangan natin itanong ay position, teacher. So, sa position, ginawa ko siyang multiple choice at nilagay ko dito lahat ng possible positions ng teacher. Pero since hindi ako sigurado na na-cover ko nga, okay, lahat ng possible positions ng participants ko, pwede akong magdagdag ng option na other. 
okay? Para itatype in na lang ng participant or ng teacher yung position nila kapag hindi kasama yung position nila sa choices or sa options na binigay natin. Okay, let me show you how it looks like. Then. So, we have here the name of teacher. Kunwari, pipila pan ko siya. Okay, and then department. Pipili ako ng department ko. And position ko. Let's say, for example, yung participant, wala dun yung position niya. Pwede niya i-click yung other, tapos i-statype in na lang niya yung position niya. Kasi master teacher ko siya. Okay, and then isasabit na lang yung ko. Okay, so now we have the name the department, and the position. So, just like what I've said before, hindi na naman natin kailangan ilagay yung date and time kasi automatically may timestamp na. But, um, if in case na you would like to ask for the time or for the date, pwede naman siya, okay, puntahan natin dito sa choices natin and we could look for date. Ayan. So, for example, hihingin natin yung date of attendance nila. So, for example, hihingin natin yung date of attendance nila. So, pwede na natin siyang i-require. And dito, sa tatlong dots na to, we could also include the time. Ayan. So, showing you how it looks like. Ayan. So, showing you how it looks like on the participants end. So, they have to click the calendar para may lagay nila kung kailan sila umattend nung uh, in-service training and kung anong oras. Okay. Ganyan. So, halimbawa, hihingin din natin ang contact number. Okay? So, short answer siya dapat. Kung hindi siya lumalabas sa short answer, pwede mo naman siya i-click. And, meron tayong response validation here. So, kung halimbawa, number lang naman talaga yung dapat ilagay ni participant kasi contact number yung hihingin natin, so, number lang yung pwedeng tanggapin ng ating form. na kung hindi lumabas yung response validation at gusto natin siya lagyan, Okay, pwede natin siya mahanap ulit dito sa tatlong dots. Okay, and piliin natin yung response validation. So again, pipiliin ko lang is number. Kasi yun lang naman talaga yung kailangan ko and i-require natin siya. Okay, so for you to see it, kung paano nag-work yung response validation, ayan. So halimbawa, ilalagay ko yung number ko. Ayan, okay siya kapag numbers. Pero pag halimbawa, naglagay ako ng letters, Okay? Hindi siya tatanggapin ng ating Google Form kasi may response validation tayo ang binagay, which is dapat numbers yung ilalagay ng participants natin. Okay? So, kunwari, okay na to. Ito na yung attendance natin for our in-service training. So, again, all we need to do is to send it. Okay? Copy the link. Let's shorten the URL, copy the link, and send it out to our participants. So, sa paggamit ng Google Form as our attendance sheet, depende talaga siya sa kung ano yung kailangan mo na data or information at kung anong format yung gusto mong sundin. Okay? Now, let me show you how this form looks like kapag may responses na. Okay, so kunwari meron na tayo mga responses. Ayan na sila. And again, let's try to download it para makita natin siya in an Excel file. So, ito na yung um, downloaded in-service training file natin ng mga sumagot sa ating attendance. So, as you can see here, we have the name of the teachers, their department, and position. Okay? So, it's a lot easier for us to sort them. Let's say, sort natin siya by department or by position. And that's how we use Google Forms in making attendance sheets. Sana po may natutunan kayo. Thank you so much for watching.